Welcome to Mom Talk Radio, the show that tackles topics important to you and your family. Finances, food, education, technology, and everything in between. We've got it covered on Mom Talk. Now, here's the host of the top-rated show for moms, Maria Bailey, on Mom Talk Radio. Welcome to Mom Talk Radio. I'm Michelle Jerson with Passport Mommy. Excited to be here with you today. Don't forget, head to the website, PassportMommy.com. That's where you can sign up for giveaways and some fun tips. And also follow us on social, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook at Passport Mommy. So today's show is going to be a lot of fun. We are going to talk with somebody who owns Bebe Voyage, and it is a great company. If you are trying to travel with young ones, if it's your first trip, they offer some really great advice. We'll talk to Laura. She's the CEO and founder of Matriarch. It's a digital health and wellness app for post-delivery very important, something we can all use if we have gone through uh, labor and delivery. And then we will talk with Shanna Lee. She is a children's book author and her story is really wonderful. And of course, it's Breast Cancer Awareness Month. So we will talk with Dr. August who will give us tips and just tell us what's new when it comes to breast cancer screening. First up, we have Marianne Perez de Francius from Bebe Voyage. Did I pronounce it right? Bebe Voyage? You've got it right. All right. I love the name. I think it's so clever. (laughs) Thank you. You're welcome. So, Marianne, tell me a little bit about Baby Voyage. You basically help people see the value of and access peace in their daily lives so we can all live in a better world. And that includes giving advice to parents on how they can travel with their babies. Exactly. So Bebe Voyage is a community of globetrotting parents. Right now we have over 10,000 members around the world providing collectively sourced local knowledge and practical advice on traveling with a baby. And our whole kind of raison d'etre, to keep going with the Frenchism, is Uh just because you have a baby doesn't mean that you have to give up on travel or give up on the things that are important to you. Um, So we're really looking to help people keep traveling or even start traveling uh, with their little ones. I love it. And that was always my mantra, too. I said when I first found out I was pregnant, granted, I was thrilled. But I was also like, wait, I have a trip to New Zealand planned. I was going to go to Italy (laughs) and I thought my life was over. And then I said, hold up. Life is not over. And I made it my mission to to travel with them as you know, often as I could, as little as my daughter was. And it's it just enhances the experience. Totally. It just You get access to so many different things than, than you would when you don't have a baby. And you get to meet different people and, and experience. For me, I think it's almost more about experiencing the local culture more like a co- local because um, mm-hmm. you get to go to playgrounds and find out where the, where the kids groups are and things like that that you wouldn't necessarily do if you didn't have a kid. Right, exactly. And you have been traveling around, I mean, before and after children, Brazil, U.S., Israel, Turkey, France, Austria, Sweden, and Mozambique. You've lived in those places, and then you've traveled to even more around the world. So clearly you have a ton of experience in this field. Tell me about your travel guides and how you've tailored them for families. Exactly. So we've actually just got this great series of travel guides that we're pulling, uh, putting together. Um, we have travel guides for uh, Paris, for London, for Chicago, for Sydney, and for Tokyo. And okay. we have more coming soon, like Stockholm and New York, and I think D.C. is in the pipeline, too. Oh, and right. Reykjavik, Iceland. Oh, um, yeah. And they are, <laughs> and they're specifically tailored to parents traveling with kids under five. So not only do we put in family-friendly hotels and um, and restaurants and stuff like that, but things as granular as what's the breastfeeding culture like in that city? Mm-hmm. Is it okay for me to just whip out my boob and start feeding right. my baby in a restaurant, <laughs> 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 or or is that going to be frowned upon? And and like you know maybe and and in doing this, we found out that that there's different facilities and different things available in different um, places, like in Sydney. Apparently, they have these great mom rooms or family rooms in all the malls and in restaurants with, like, couches and microwaves and um, where you can just, like, hang out with your little one and breastfeed and, um, you know, and they even have play areas if there's another sibling around and stuff like that. Um, So so we've really put a lot of work into this. 
Um, we also have airport maps that are included that tell you where the playground is in an airport. <laughs> what, That's where important the because especially are. if you have a really long layover. Exactly. Um, and then what other? Oh, and then we have travel, um, travel medicine and health advice. So what's the equivalent of baby Tylenol in France or mm. what kind of uh, what brand of diapers can I find in the UK? Uh, things like that. So it's really all the questions that all our community members have when they're traveling. We've kind of collected them and harnessed them and put them all into a handy travel guide so, so you don't have to go through all the forums and, and kind of sift through all the information yourself. We've collected it all for you and put it together in a handy travel guide. That's amazing because what you just listed off really is everything we need to know as a new parent traveling. And I know myself now I feel like, oh, I'm a pro at this. But at the beginning, I was a nervous wreck. And just all the things that you need, you don't need what, like you said, what to look for when you're there. So you don't have to bring all your diapers, but you know what brand to go buy once you are in the destination. And you also have uh, Baby Voyage trails, geotagged, image-rich trails in cities around the world tell me about those exactly so that's actually your this is like the sneak peek your audience members are getting the first whiff of this because they're actually coming out in about two weeks okay. um and they're exactly what you said they're geotagged image rich trails and the idea is that they're basically tours that you can do in a day so it's like you're going to paris for the first time and you have a baby how do you how do you see the eiffel tower and and notre dame and uh the arc de triomphe is it possible to do all those in a day? Is there like a good restaurant along the way? What's stroller accessible? What's not? What do I do if it's raining? Like, is there a museum somewhere along that path? And so is there a playground also? <laughs> right, <laughs> always the playground. <laughs> needs, to, needs to stretch out or whatever. Um, and so, so we made these trails um, and they're all made by people who either live in those cities or travel there very often with small kids. And it's things that you can realistically do in a day that's going to be fun for the little one, that's going to be fun for the parents. You know, there's always like the, the foodie stop also where, you know, there's a good, what's the closest uh, good restaurant near the playground? Uh, so that <laughs> once the kid has had, had their playground opportunity, then mom and dad can go and have a glass of wine and a good meal um, and have their time too. Right. So. Oh, th that sounds excellent. And you hit on a key point, what's stroller friendly, what's not, because there's nothing worse than getting to a destination and realizing no strollers allowed. And then you're stuck with this massive stroller and either you can't visit where you were going to visit or you have to find a place to park it. Totally. Or what's happened to me in Stockholm, for example, is that they, they have everything is like super stroller accessible, except in some places they have stroller parking. And it never occurred to me to bring a lock. And so everybody else has their strollers locked up. And I'm like, oh, no, <laughs> can I just leave my stroller here unlocked? Um, so, so things like that we've got covered for you. And, um, and we've done all the research and will hopefully make it a lot easier for you and other families to travel with their little ones. Yeah, now that's interesting that you said a stroller lock because whenever I leave my stroller among tons of other strollers, we were just in Disney. I thought, what is to prevent anybody from just coming up and walking off with our stroller? You hope that people don't, but that's really, really brilliant. Is that something that they just do in Stockholm that they have actual where you can lock it up to something? Are they like I've seen it. In Stockholm, I'm trying to think of it in other places, but basically it's just like a bike lock. You know, people just buy bike locks and then right. and then wrap it around a pole. Or, oh, or, wow. Um, like, I'm, yeah, at the, where I've seen the biggest kind of stroller parking area is at the um, Unibaken, which is the Astrid Lindgren Children's Museum. Okay. With Pippi Longstocking and, and like all those um, Swedish kids books. So they had this museum there. So, of course, there's lots of kids, and, and they just have this, like, covered stroller parking area. Um, and they just have posts, like, the same way you have bike posts <laughs> where you yeah. can lock your bike. There's just all these posts, uh, and people would lock their strollers to them. Uh, I love it. And, yeah. So, yeah. So, picking up a bike lock, an extra bike lock when you're traveling so that you can lock your stroller someplace is actually not a bad idea. <laughs> yeah, that is a great tip. Do you have, we have about two minutes left. What other tips do you think moms need to know when traveling with little ones? Well, another thing that we have are packing lists. 
And I don't know about you, but no matter how much I've traveled, I get to a place and I'm like, oh, crap, I forgot right. my kid's toothbrush. <laughs> yes. <laughs> like, or I forgot, you know, what everything. And every time it's something different because you're because you're like, you're like, okay, next time I'm going to be good about packing all the all the toiletries, but then you forget the the baby wipes or whatever it is. Exactly. Um, it's so, so basically, yep. So basically, what we've done is we've made travel packing lists. Um, which are expansive and expensive, um, and we've categorized them for you also. So what to put in your suitcase, what to put in your carry-on, your travel documents, uh, what to, you know, what do you need in terms of, terms of food and drink. For a while, I was always forgetting the, the bottle brush uh, uh-huh. for my, my baby bottles. <laughs> right. Um, we have this for infants, for toddlers, uh, cold weather, warm weather. And basically, we've made these really extensive, comprehensive lists. You can download the master list, which has all of them together, or just individual ones. Um, you know, if you just are going on a short trip or you don't need the cold weather one uh, or the warm weather one. Uh, and, and, um, yeah, and those are have- available on our website, too. Perfect. And your website is babyvoyage.com. That, you're brilliant. I can't wait to see the rest of the website. I was on some of it last night. I mean, it's really everything that a parent needs when traveling. Marian Perez de Francis, thank you so much for joining me today. Mom Talk Radio, a busy mom's best friend. Welcome back to Mom Talk Radio. I'm Michelle Gerson with Passport Mommy. And on the line, I have with me Shanna Lee Charbonneau. She is a children's author of some incredible books, such as My Mama Loves Me, I'm Her Little Girl, My Daddy Loves Me, I'm His Little Boy. She's internationally and nationally awarded children's picture book series, My Family Loves Me. Thank you so much for joining me today. Oh, thank you, Michelle. I I really appreciate it. Tell me how you got started on this series of family books. It is a very odd story. So I <laughs> I received my degree in statistics, so I never really planned to do a children's series or, or be a writer. But as you know, children change your life drastically. And yes. my son was born in 2010, and he had a very severe reflux. When you see a baby come out and he's beautiful outside and he looks fine, you don't realize maybe there's some things that didn't quite mature inside. Mm-hmm. And his diaphragm was not matured. So what ended up happening is his food would go straight in and then straight back up with the potential of drowning him. We, oh, gosh. we almost lost him twice. Yeah, oh, it, was, it was very serious. So we, we being my husband and I, held him for six months straight, 24-7, literally taking cat naps uh, with my mother and my mother-in-law helping us just to keep him alive. And in my desperation in the middle of the night, he would never calm down because he was, he was in pain and fighting. And I started humming this very bizarre song to him. And, of course, when you hold a baby almost 24-7, you begin to continue that song. And I yes. started making up words. Yeah, isn't that funny and, how we do that? When I'm like, where did these words come from? Where did this tune come from? It just... Yeah. Right. Well, well, my tune was of desperation and my mm-hmm. tune were, was all the things I was going to do with him and uh, what moms were for if he would just stay alive. Oh. And it was it was a really tough time. Now, when he turned three, I wrote the song down thinking maybe one day he would switch it to daddy and then sing it to his own children. Well, lo and behold, when he turned four, a publisher uh, found it, and the first book came out. It went international in 90 days. Uh, four books later, uh, being recognized by the president of Ireland, Dave Ramsey, Laura Bush, multiple five wow. medals, totally changed my life. Had no, I thought it was going to be a one and done book. Yeah, Tell me fun. about the illustrations that are part of the book. Oh, no, he's amazing. So his name is Israel De Leon, And it's really a great story because when I started off, they showed me a bunch of illustrators and, excuse me, and he, you know, it, it was, it wasn't what I was looking for. I wanted something very digital, very real, even though it's an illustration, just something that you could almost feel yourself be in, in the picture. And 
I actually went to church and I prayed and I said, God, you know, everybody on the earth, please bring me somebody who can do this book. (laughs) Now, I didn't think God would take the, you know, everybody on the earth seriously because Israel's in Brazil. And the same day or the same time in Brazil, he had actually emailed my uh, publisher and said, you know, you might have some work for me and here's my work. I wanted it to be adventurous. The first sketch that came over to me was, just to, I asked him to do a mom and a son walking in a in a park, and I struggled with it for I'm going to say a couple weeks. And finally, in the middle of the night, I woke up and said, "Oh, castles, dragons, uh, you know, fairies, uh, <laughs> and pirates, dinosaurs." And my husband was like three in the morning, like, "What are you talking about?" You know, now he's <laughs> because we've been on book number five now, but, but right, and that's. That's what just made it all cohesive. So in the book, you see illustrations of, you know, a mom and a son doing dinosaur hunting and, you know, bone hunting and Egyptian safari and African safaris. And it's literally a, a parent and a child going all over the world, just viewing the wonderful things of the world. That is absolutely amazing. I love it. So it has such an inspirational story and also is very creative and imaginative and gives kids so many things to look at and to explore. And I think the message is just beautiful. Where can people find these books? They are actually all over. Of course, they're on Amazon, but Barnes and Noble, they have them both in stores and online, Walmart, Target, support your local bookstores. Definitely go in there. If it's not on their shelf already, they can order it very quickly. Great. And then for more information, people can also go to myfamilylovesme.org, right? Correct. Yes. Myfamilylovesme.org. Thank you. Terrific. Thank you so much, Shanalee Charbonneau. I can't wait to order these books for my daughter. I know she will love them. And in addition to that, I'm going to buy a few for gifts because what a wonderful gift to give. Um, books are, I think, the most incredible gift because it, you know, it just, you sit, you bond with your child and the messages and the illustrations just bring so many things to life. Coming up next, we have Laura Arndt. She is the CEO and founder of Matriarch. It's a digital health and wellness app for post delivery. And she's going to talk to us about exercises and things that we could do mentally and physically after we give birth. You're listening to Mom Talk Radio. I'm Michelle Jerson with Passport Mommy. Don't forget, you can go to the website, passportmommy.com, sign up for some free giveaways and tips and follow us on social at Passport Mommy. And when you head to passportmommy.com, I have a section about all the trips that I've taken before and after baby, a lot of tips on family travel. If you're traveling for the first time with little ones, just what to expect at the airport, what to know when it comes to even bringing breast milk with you on the airplane. So many tips. Also, some tips on great products. If you are prenatal, postnatal, I have my recommendations there. And if you've ever missed an episode of this radio show, you can go to the radio section and they will all be listed there uh, in podcast form. More coming up in just a few. Radio, a busy mom's best friend. Welcome back to Mom Talk Radio. I'm Michelle Jerson with Passport Mommy, and we're talking with Laura Arndt. She is the CEO and founder of Matriarch. What a great name. It's a digital health and wellness app for post-delivery. She has a degree in exercise science, certified strength and conditioning specialist, and a certified pre- and postnatal Pilates instructor. Laura has owned and operated a fitness company in the D.C. area for 12 years. Laura, thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you for having me. First off, I love that you do pre and postnatal Pilates because I have to say I'm based in New York City and I see a lot of prenatal yoga, but it was really hard to find prenatal Pilates. I agree. I um, have had trouble myself finding other Pilates instructors. I'm currently on maternity leave myself. Oh, congrats. And when I was looking, thank you. When I was looking for even substitutions for people to take over my classes, um, it's just, it's not as common to have that Pilates certification. You're right. The yoga certification is much more common. 
Yeah, I wonder why that is, because Pilates is so good for developing the core, obviously, for labor. But at the same time, I feel like there's a lot of people saying, don't do certain Pilates moves. Don't do this. Don't do that when you're pregnant. So to have somebody who can guide you and still do Pilates, but do it right is amazing. No, I agree. Um, The Pilates that I teach is um, mat based. So there are a lot of exercises you would normally do on your back, which Mm -hmm. you can't necessarily do once you're past the first trimester. Um, So you really do need someone that can help you modify and, you know, if you're using props or whatever you need to do to modify your body to make it um, something that is safe during pregnancy. Exactly. So is that where the Matriarch app comes in? Now, I know that's post-delivery. Are there exercises on there that we can follow when we are pregnant or is it mostly after? It does both. The actual phases and programs that we have, we have two phases. We have a phase one, which is designed for zero to six months postpartum and phase two, which is designed for six months and beyond. Um, Those are post-delivery, but we have an exercise list with over 110 exercises that are professionally filmed, and if you go into our app and you go to the exercise list, you can actually search by muscle group, you can search by body position, and you can also type in pregnant, and all of the pregnancy-safe exercises will pop up. So although there's not a designated plan or phase for those, we do have a bunch of exercises that are, you know, safe and effective for pregnancy in the app. That's great, because I know when I'm taking group fitness classes, you can tell the instructor, hey, I'm pregnant, but they're running a full class, so you don't always get the modifications that you need, so you really have to know yourself and be educated. I think so. I think women um, need to be able to do some some of their own research um, online and then, of course, look for the right instructors. Uh, And one of the problems that I see uh, that is very common is that a lot of, um, you know, physicians, midwives, doulas, you know, exercise isn't necessarily part of their curriculum. So if women are going to their medical or birth professionals asking questions, they don't necessarily have the answers either. Uh, right. So it's really, it's really up to women to do a little bit of their own research and find instructors that are trained. Um, and that was one of the, the real functions of our app for the postpartum. I found all of the women I worked with, once they were cleared for exercise, they were given minimal guidance on how to properly rehabilitate their core and pelvic floor. Um, yes. So I wanted to give a program that if, even if you were doing other exercise, it could be part of that uh, in addition to that. And if you weren't doing any exercise, it could be, you know, just the thing that you did on its own to help with the core and pelvic floor postpartum. Right. Absolutely. And I think that, you know, we hear about that when we're pregnant, but it's not until afterwards when we realize, oh, my gosh, we probably should have done our pelvic floor exercises a little more, uh, you know, while we were pregnant and, and how important they are after, because it really is so important for just continual health. I agree. Oh, I agree. Yes. Little one. <laughs> I know. I'm sorry. Just trying to get a pacifier and see if that helps a little bit. Um, Yeah, so I agree. I think that a lot of women I've worked with um, that did not do core and pelvic floor work, they jump right back into more intense exercise, thinking that they're ready, and they end up injured, or they end up with pelvic floor issues, (laughs) um, which can last a really long time. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I know for myself, when I tried to get right back into exercise after I gave birth and tried those jumping jacks, I was like, oh, no, they're not happening. (laughs) I need to do some other exercises first. Well, and it's true. And I'm sure you you may or may not have heard of of, um, recti diastasis or diastasis. I've heard it pronounced both ways. Um, And that is the separation of the tissue down the center of your abdominals. Well, it's very common during pregnancy. It happens in almost two-thirds of pregnant women. Um, But after the baby comes, 
a lot, what a lot of women don't know is that tissue is still very susceptible to, um, you know, you can widen the gap if you're not careful, if you do the wrong exercises or you lift things the wrong way. Um, and you can also do exercises that help to close the gap. And so when I was making the app, we consulted with the diastasis specialist. And mm-hmm. she, um, you know, referenced that you don't want to do exercises in the first six months that are high impact. And that includes running, jumping, heavy lifting. Um, so a lot of women don't know that. And they jump right back into what they were doing pre, you know, pre-pregnancy. And, yeah. and that's really not necessarily the best thing for them. Right. So what would you say if you had to just name one exercise now to work on after or even while you're pregnant to try to minimize the diastasis, what would you recommend? So the one exercise that I, I really love are the bird dog exercises. You know, you're on all fours on your hands and knees. Um, you keep a neutral spine so you keep your core muscles pulled in tight, your back stays straight, and you extend out your opposite arm and leg. So Mm -hmm. you get your arm and leg into a straight line, you pause, you come back down, you repeat on the opposite side. Um, It's safe during all three trimesters, (laughs) Um, and it's something that after you have the baby, you could start doing almost right away. I also love pelvic tilts. Um, They don't necessarily help to close the gap, but pelvic tilts, Um, you know, you rock your hips forward and back and you keep that flexibility of your lower back and your pelvic floor muscles. So that's another really good exercise to do um, during pregnancy and postpartum. Great, great. And I would love, I can't wait to check out your app. And I want to talk to you more about what's included in the app. But before I forget, is what is the charge for the app? The app is completely free. Oh, wow. Yep, it's only available on Apple right now. Um, okay. But it is 100% free, and we do have an Android waiting list. So if somebody wanted to go to the website, which is matriarchapp.com, um, they could email us and, and get get on that Android waiting list as well. Oh, that's terrific, because I know a lot of times with apps like this, it's usually they'll give you very basic information for free. And then if you want more, if you want to see exercises or videos, then you have to pay. So that's a really nice service that you're doing with this app, because in addition to exercises, you also are working on mom's mental health after she gives birth, which I think is so important, because, again, we focus so much on the labor and on the baby but there isn't a lot of talk of mom. Absolutely. I found that during pregnancy, there was a lot of positivity and a lot of, um, you know, people and information and education on your nutrition and your mental health and everything for the, for the mom. But then after the baby comes, it all switches over to baby. <laughs> so yes. we really, you really wanted to create something that was very mom centric. So the app has some audio meditations. Um, we have a curated news feed where we feed in articles on wellness, fitness, nutrition, and exercise. Um, we also have a community forum that we've built out that women can communicate within the app and ask questions. Um, so in addition to the, to the exercises, you know, like you said, we wanted to have a well-rounded approach to mom's um, overall health and wellness. That's great. And I think that community is so important because I know, again, after I gave birth to my daughter, I was just so wrapped up in being a new mom and everything going on with that, that I barely got out. I didn't meet new moms for probably, I don't know, six or seven months. And, but to have that community online, just to be able to share like, oh my gosh, my baby's going through this. Is this normal? Or how'd you deal with this? How'd you deal with that? It's just such a a life-saving thing to have because it's you just don't know these things as a first-time parent no I agree I think a lot of women are really struggling with that loneliness factor right after giving birth and um, you know having the new baby and not sleeping and everything that goes along with that so um, and I can attest to, to, to the that same thing I'm lucky enough that um, I have a lot of family close by and some good friends that, um, you know, getting out of the house and, and seeing people or having an online community, you know, one or the other, I think is very important. Right. Absolutely. Now, you also mentioned you have a breathing ring on the app. What is that? 
Um, the breathing ring is something that you can go to in the app. And um, it, it's a, a visual, you know, the ring expands, you inhale, it, it deflates, you exhale. Um, it's really something that is a tool that can be used to kind of lower your heart rate and get you deep breathing. So if you're having a moment where um, you're feeling really stressed out, you just <laughs> need a second, you know, you can focus on the ring. Um, we also have some restorative images that okay. um, have a little bit of sound. So like one of them is a waterfall and you, you just watch the waterfall and you've got this peaceful sound. And I've had a bunch of women tell me that it's something that they like to look at when they're nursing because it has this like relaxing sound that goes with it. And it's this calming image. <laughs> so right. when they're feeling really anxious, you know, they can go to the restorative images and just kind of watch them and play the sound as well. Um, yeah. So it can be good for mom and the sound and everything is kind of good for baby too. Yeah, that sounds great. And even still, when you're prenatal prenatal as well, you want to keep the stress levels down and look, maybe you're aggravated at your husband or work or whatever the case. That's a good thing to do is just go right to the app and watch some of those images. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that, you know, um, we've kind of got the reputation of being a postpartum app, but I do think, you know, the meditation, the community forum, the images, our newsfeed, even some of the exercises are very relevant while you're pregnant as well. Right, exactly. And you also have a tracking system for your water intake, meditation and exercises, which I think is great because it's easy to forget in a day how much water you've had. And it's so important to have a lot of water, especially if you're nursing. Right. We knew that we weren't going to have the full capability, you know, to track calories or track food. But if we could at least track water, because that is something that a lot of women underestimate you know, just how much water they need, especially yeah. if they're nursing. Um, exactly. So at least having the water tracker, you know, I felt was really important. Um, and so one more thing I just want to touch on uh, before I forget, you know, these exercises and these meditations, it doesn't matter if you are six weeks postpartum or you had your last kid six years ago. Um, these exercises can still help you. I've had a lot of women ask me that, you know, and say, well, I had a baby three years ago. Is it too late for me? Um, and the answer is, you know, most definitely not, especially right. if you never did any core and pelvic floor work. At any point, you can start doing some of these exercises and you're going to see a benefit from that. Um, so I just want, you know, all these moms to know, even if it's been, you know, a few years since you delivered, um, right. it's still, still relevant. It's still helpful. Um, I've had women who had kids 20 years ago get on the app and say, um, you know, I never did these. No one told me I was supposed to do exercises. I didn't know. I'm still having issues 20 years later. Right. A hundred percent. And uh, so, you know, the exercises are equipment free as well. So there's stuff you can do just, you know, on the floor with the mat. That's it. Um, Perfect. So, you that's know, great. new moms up to basically any mom can benefit from from the app. <laughs> I love it. I can't wait to download it. Laura Arndt, thank you so much for joining me today. I think the app Matriarch is extremely beneficial to both prenatal and postnatal moms anywhere. And as she said, you don't have to just be postnatal as though you just had your baby. It can be at any time. Thanks so much for joining me today. Next up, we're going to talk with Dr. Carrie August. It, October is National Breast Cancer Awareness Month, and she's going to talk to us about all of the advances when it comes to breast cancer screening. Mom Talk Radio, a busy mom's best friend. Welcome back to Mom Talk Radio. I'm Michelle Jerson with Passport Mommy. October is National Breast Cancer Awareness Month and very close to my heart. My mom has had breast cancer twice and it affects so many women. And that's why I am very happy to have on the line with me, Dr. Carrie August. She is a fellow of the College of American Pathologists and a board member of the CAP Foundation, which sponsors the C test and treat program. She received her BS from her Bachelor of Science from Yale University and her MD from Northwestern University. Hi, Dr. August. Thank you so much for joining me. Thanks for having me, Michelle. Tell me, what is the C test and treat program? Michelle, our goal 
of the see, test, and treat program is to make sure that no woman ever dies of breast cancer or cervical cancer because she didn't have the insurance to cover her screenings. Our goal is to do the important screenings to save lives. Our program provides free screenings for women who don't have insurance in a variety of cities across the country. We'd love to be all over the country someday. Mm -hmm. And we partner with local hospitals uh, to do these screenings. And the unique aspect of our program is not only do these women get their mammogram and their pap test, but they get the result the same day discussed with them by a pathologist who's a physician. And then if they need additional testing or additional treatment, there are representatives from that hospital right on site to help them arrange it, help them go through all the steps uh, for getting the care they need arranged and paid for. At the same time, while they're waiting for their results, we have little health fairs. They can get their blood pressure checked, learn about diet, exercise. And there are people on site who help play with their kids and give them snacks so that there's no reason for a woman not to get her screening done. I love it. I think that is so important because I know when I go and get my screenings done, it is so nerve wracking as it is. And you just cross your fingers that you hope these next six months you get a a good result when you talk to the pathologist or when you hear from them right after. And I think this is such an important program. And really, women should not feel that there is any barrier to prevent them from getting screened. So tell me what advances in cancer detection and diagnosis are increasing a woman's chances to not not only survive, but to thrive today. As you know, there are many advances in detection, improved techniques in radiology, different types of mammography, different types of other imaging, especially to help those women who have what we call dense breasts or thick tissue in their breasts. Uh, instead of having to always go to the operating room to get her diagnosis on a big chunk of tissue, women can have a biopsy done with just a little needle and as an outpatient. And this really makes it easier to get the diagnosis, makes it less taxing on a patient. At the same time, since we know we have more and more treatments for breast cancers, we have ways of looking for specific molecular targets in breast cancer cells. That's part of the job of the pathologist, to look for these targets. One of the most important ones that we talk about now is called HER2. So if women have this specific target in their breast cancer, there are drugs designed to aim at that HER2 target to help improve women's chances, not only, as you said, of surviving, but also of thriving. Yeah, and that is so important. And it's really nice to hear that there have been so many advances because we all have friends and relatives who have been affected by breast cancer. And it really just affects all of us, men, women, children, um, one way or another. So I really appreciate you coming on the show today. Tell me, where can people go for more information about the C test and treat program? So there are two great sites to go to. One is foundation.cap.org, and that tells a lot more about the uh, C-Test and Treat program. And also, listeners should go to yourpathologist.org. talks a lot about cancer diagnoses, the work of the pathologist, patient stories, some great videos to watch. So those are the best places to go. Great. Dr. Carrie August, thank you so much for joining me today. I really appreciate you uh, taking the time to, to come on Mom Talk Radio and talk about such an important topic. Thank you all so much for joining Mom Talk Radio today. I'm Michelle Jerson with Passport Mommy. Don't forget, you can follow us on social at Passport Mommy. Have a great rest of the day, and I'll talk to you next week.